Ladies and gentlemen, tech enthusiasts around the world, get ready. It's time for another of my infamous battery drain test, this time comparing the M1 base MacBook Air versus the M2 base MacBook Air head to head. The M2 Air was just released about a month ago, and with the Apple event just around the corner, many are wondering which model is right for them. And for me personally, battery health is one of the biggest determining factors whenever I purchase a shiny new tech product. By the way, I already covered the performance difference between the M1 chip and the M2 chip, so if you are more concerned with performance, click the card at the top right for my head-to-head -head performance comparison between the two, or click the link in the video description. Guys, this was a nail-biter, not gonna lie, so grab a drink, grab some snacks, and get ready as we go into the tech octagon to see which MacBook will come out on top. You ready? Let's do this. All right, all right, so most of you are used to the format of my drain test. I won't waste much time on the specs and introductions. You already know how we do it around here. Brightness was turned to around 70% because that feels pretty standard, at least to me. All other settings are identical, including the same Wi-Fi network. True Tone turned off. Bluetooth was turned on for both. You know, just want to keep an even playing field here. So now that we have our settings to be identical, let's throw up the tail of the tape so you can see head to head what is different about both machines. For battery health, the main things to look at are screen size, physical battery size, and chipset, as these three factors are some of the most important at gauging battery life and health. All right, both MacBooks were instructed on the rules in the locker room. So ladies and gents, time for the bout to start. Here we go, round number one. So as is customary on my channel, test number one is a quick and simple standby test because let's face it, inevitably while being on our computers, we may leave it running while we go make a sandwich, take out the trash, maybe play a quick match on Pokemon Go. Whatever the case is, a straightforward standby test is like a good warm up for these machines. Consider it their stretching time. Nothing is straining the chipset all too much while being on standby. If anything, just displaying those pixels is what takes the most energy. So after about 60 minutes on standby, we see some interesting results. The M1 Air, either because of its technically weaker chipset or smaller battery size, came in at 94%, while the M2 equipped Air came in at 97%. Not bad at all for a simple standby test, but this is only the start of the tech rumble. We still have plenty of rounds to go. So for round number two, we can't go too easy on these guys. So for the second test, we went ahead and ran a multitasking test because after all, on a MacBook, you'll likely do a variety of tasks all at once. You may be doing some homework while listening to Apple Music, or you may be editing a batch of photos and editing a video at the same time. So what I did is first cranked up Thinkorswim, a web-based application that allows you to track the movements of stocks in real time. This is known as technical analysis. Then after that, I layered over different applications, starting with playing Bad Bunny's new album on Apple Music, then running Adobe Lightroom to edit some photographs, and finally cranked up Final Cut Pro to mimic editing a full project all in conjunction with everything else. All of these applications at the end of the test were running simultaneously, and it proved a pretty difficult task for both, as both of them took a beating during this test with the M1 Air in pink coming in at 69 percent after the grueling test and the m2 air in midnight comes in with a slightly more impressive 70 percent still though they're both within the margin of error so let's give them some time to catch some air on the stool as we head into round number three Round number three consists of a FaceTime test because honestly, many of us MacBook lovers love to FaceTime our loved ones while on our laptops. I mean, it's just so convenient while knocking out an assignment or doing chores around the house. In my case, it was a double whammy anyway because I had to fold some clothes and I took advantage to FaceTime my beautiful girlfriend while doing so. For me, the average FaceTime lasts around 15 minutes, so I had both these MacBooks FaceTime with my girlfriend for 15 minutes, and afterwards, we arrive at the following results. Just as before, both MacBooks are putting up a decent fight, basically being a slugfest, as the M1 Air comes in at a respectable 62%, while the M2 equipped Air outshines the M1, expanding its lead coming in at 64%. It's still way too early to call, and it's anyone's dub to take but who will prevail? Pause this video right now and drop your predictions in the comment section below.
All right, round number four. You ever noticed how Apple loves to advertise their super long battery life? But if you look closely, a lot of the time it is accompanied by an asterisk. And it says it is while having Apple TV playback. This is done on purpose as the M1 and M2 are more than well suited to handle the very little workload Apple's native Apple TV app brings. So I myself wanted to put that claim to the test and see whether there are any discrepancies. So we loaded up Apple TV on both computers and had both running for 90 minutes straight to see how well the M1 and M2 could handle extended periods on Apple TV. And honestly, I was pleasantly surprised as both held up quite well during this test with the M1 Air only dropping to 45% and wait. Wait, hold on a second. Would you look at that? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a tie. Somehow the M1 pulled out its trump card and somehow managed to tie it up as the M2 Air also now stands at 45%. Wow, what a great fight we have so far, but we're far from over. Only one MacBook can remain standing. Let's now head over to test number five. I don't know about y'all, but nowadays it seems like everybody enjoys their streaming content. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, whatever it may be, a lot of us spend a considerable amount of time consuming content on our MacBooks, and rightfully so. No matter what your preferred streaming platform is, this test is meant to represent and mimic the average user who loves to consume content straight off of their MacBook. So I fired up my Hulu account on both and started to go on a watching spree of Bob's Burgers, a show that my girlfriend recently put me on, and I know, I know, I'm late to the party, but man is this show hilarious, especially Tina. I think she's my favorite of the show. In actuality, this test is my opportunity to catch a break from babysitting tech, so I hit up the gym with my roommate and came back just in time. So after three hours of watching Hulu, both our MacBooks are now sucking air. Both are extremely gassed out with very little left in the tank. The M1 Air with its tremendous heart isn't going to give up so easily, as it now slides to 15%. However, the M2 Air is right on its tail, only coming in a percentage point better, officially at 16%. Man oh man, it'd be the upset of the century if the M1 Air could somehow steal the W. As we head into the championship rounds, I want to invite everyone watching to hit that like button down below and consider subscribing as these videos take a ton of preparation and meticulous care in ensuring it's a fair fight. And don't worry, we'll all wait for you to exit full screen or scroll down below to hit that subscribe button. Have you done it? Yeah? Okay, perfect. Ladies and gents, it's coming down to the wire. We now head into round number six, our gaming test. Before going to bed, I almost always play some kind of game, whether that's playing Minecraft or some Apple Arcade. It's always part of my going to bed ritual. I don't know if that's weird, but you already know I had to run the obligatory gaming test running Asphalt 9, a game that requires a decent bit of graphical horsepower. Now, my gaming sessions aren't stupid long, so for this test, I tried my best to win races simultaneously on both machines. It's a lot harder than it looks, but after a reasonable 30 minutes of gameplay, both our combatants are still on their feet but almost on E. The M1 Air slips further, almost getting close to throwing in the towel as it comes in at a dangerously low 5%. And what about the M2 Air? Somehow it managed to fare better, as it now stands at 8% battery. Anything can still happen, so let's not count the M1 Air out just yet. Remember, it's not over till it's over. So as our final test, we head over to the dopest tech channel on the internet, the Juan and Only, and finish out our bout with a YouTube test, because just like the Hulu test, I personally spend a ton of time on YouTube, as I'm sure plenty of you watching also do. So we go full screen mode and have the two laptops fight it out until the death, or rather, until they tap out and have to be recharged. So based off last round's results, one would think the M1 Air would die first. And for those wondering, you'd be correct. The M1 Air met its fate officially at 9 hours and 48 minutes. Still a very respectable amount of time to be continuously turned on, and not only that, but also going through some pretty demanding tasks. And so ladies and gentlemen, that leaves one standing, as many people would anticipate and hope for. The M2 Air lasts a decent amount longer as it finally decided to throw in the towel officially at 10 hours and 10 minutes. So tech enthusiasts, we have our winner. The baseline M2 MacBook Air reigns supreme and shows that the implementation of the beefier M2 chip does in fact translate to slightly longer battery life. So what have we learned today? Basically, in a nutshell, the M2 chip is a worthy successor to the already hyped up M1 chip. Both are tremendous warriors, but it goes to show the M2 expanded on an already very capable chip that honestly is on its own level when comparing it to entry window machines, for example. 
If you watched the performance test video I plugged in earlier, you know the M2 also scored marginally higher than the M1, about a 10 to 15% improvement. And this same performance gain basically also translates to battery health as it's technically better, but not something out of this world better. The improvement is there, so my test shows that in a real world use case scenario, the average user can expect about 30 minutes more battery life out of the larger M2 versus the M1 Air. So there you have it guys, if you own either of these machines, I'd love to read your comments and own testimony of how well you enjoy your MacBook Airs or not. Drop your comments down below and get ready as the Apple event is right around the corner and you bet my channel will have the best coverage of everything released. Make sure to hit subscribe and guys, I'm excited for this upcoming Apple event as you can probably tell. But until next time, I can't wait to catch you all in my next video.